Welcome to our first tutorial from ADSR and SilentTutorials.com. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel and you want to do that, you can at YouTube.com forward slash ADSR Toots. So like I said, this is the first tutorial uh, from SilentTutorials.com. It's going to be broken up into two parts. It's called Your First 30 Minutes in Silent. It's kind of like a video user manual, if you will. And I'm just going to be covering the general features of the synth. And then we're also going to post some other videos uh, at the same time. This one comes out about how to get Silent working in 30 or 60, sorry, 64-bit DAWs like Logic X, and then how to create uh, this one type of sound. So jumping right into it, um, Silent is, as most of you will probably know, it's one of the most popular soft synths that there are. It just sounds good. Um, what you get, you have, it's basically a two-page synth. Um, so it's basically two synths in one, with each page having two oscillators. So it's a four oscillator synth in total, which is really cool. So this top bar right here, let's cover that. You have a polyphony number, um, where this controls how many notes you can play at once. So if you have it set to two, and you try playing a, uh, a triad, it's picking which notes to play by which whichever one you key first. Uh, you have a voice tab here, and then you have these part A and part B tabs, which toggle back and forth between the pages in the synth. And then you have this solo button. And what it does, so for this synth, there are I'm, I'm using both pages. So what we can do is if we just hit solo right now, we're just hearing what's going on in part A. And if I go to part B with solo selected, same thing. You just hear what's going on in part B. And then you have the MIDI learn and the reset all if you want to just, you know, jump in and reset all that. So moving downwards on, let's stay on part A, you have oscillator A1 and you have oscillator A2. And let's just talk about some of these controls. So the oscillators in Silent are supposedly alias free, which I'm not an expert on aliasing, but I, I believe it has something to do with at higher frequencies, the numbers, the number crunching that goes on to create those sounds will start to present some sonic artifacts that can get nasty. So supposedly uh, Silent is alias free. I'm sure it's been tested and I don't know if it is, but I do know it's one of the better sounding soft synths I've ever used. So, and I believe that's how it's marketed. So that may be one reason why it sounds so good. But uh, each oscillator is capable of producing, I believe eight unison voices in full stereo when you have that stereo knob all the way up. And adding a total of uh, 32 voices per note with its, uh, you, you can do 16 voice notes of polyphony, you can create, I think it's like over 500, you can play 500 voices simultaneously, which is a lot for a uh, soft synth. Um, one of the cool things about Silent is, you'll notice with the sound, we get down to the filter section. I'm not using any filters for the sound. Uh, just using some effects, and that's just the waveforms and everything, but it's just kind of running through. So it's on the bypass filter. So I don't have, um, you know, a whole lot going on, which is a testament to how good the waveforms sound in the oscillators. And that brings me to my next point. You get a good amount of waveforms. I think it's eight in total in Silent. You have a sine wave right here. It'll say what they are. You have a sine wave. You have a saw. You have a triangle. You have a pulse. A H pulse a Q pulse, a trice triangle saw, and noise. So the controls, you have uh, this little pitch section right here where you can control the octave. Solo that. Turn this one down. So it's just we're just we're just hearing oscillator A1 right now. Then you have this note where you can actually we can, you can actually tune. This is a really easy way to create chord sounds. Uh, you have the fine tune down here, which is changing it by sense, and you'll see it over in here. You'll see the values changing. That's one of the great things about Silent is it actually gives you numerical values every time you change something. So 
So it gives you a little bit more control over the uh, kind of fine tune unison feel. Then you have this invert, which inverts the uh, way that the wave is coming through, the waveform. And you have, say, so a volume knob. So if you have that down, no sound will come out. You have the phase knob. which is applying, uh, which is shifting the waveform using phase. And then you have this detune knob. And then the stereo knob, which is actually applying a stereo spread to the sound. And of course the pan. And then you have your, how many voices you, you want in that oscillator to be active. You have a retrig where it will actually uh, re-trigger the waveform every time you hit a note. And then the cool, really cool feature in Silent is you have the C and P, which is copy and paste. So let's say you have, you want to use the same two waveforms and same settings in, in your part A page for both oscillators. You can just copy and paste it over, which makes it really quick. And this is the exact same for both uh, part A and part B. And then you have your amp envelope. So if I turn the attack all this is affecting the attack, decay, sustain, and release of part A. Um, and you can have different attack, decay, sustain, and release for both part A and part B. And then you can actually start to modulate those, which we'll get into in part two. But uh, So it, it creates a pretty flexible palette for creating sounds. So moving on down, now that we've covered this little top bar, the little gray strip, we've covered the oscillator sections and the amp envelopes for both part A and part B, part B because they are the same thing. Let's move down to the filters. The uh, filters, there are two, one for part A and one for part B. And you get a bypass filter, a low pass, a band pass, and a high pass. And then you have a filter A decibel where it's actually so you can let's solo this so you can hear that. It'll add a little bit more of the bass coming through with most of the filter types. It'll open up the sound a little bit more and can make it a little bit bigger and fuller. So the the filter section you have the the controls you have are the cutoff. So let me actually go to a low pass filter. So you have these three controls here. You have the cutoff, the resonance, and the drive. And the, so the cutoff is doing what basically every cutoff does in any kind of subtractive analog wavetable synthesis for that matter. It opens up the filter. The resonance is adding a resonance to the filter. And this drive is a cool feature. Um, makes it a little bit louder. And to my ears, it's adding a little bit of distortion, which is pretty cool to have in your filter section. And you'll have, you have, like I said, you have two filters, one for part A and one for part B, and these can be completely independent from each other. Then you have this master filter control, which is basically, uh, it controls both filter A and B at the same time. So filter A will go into filter B and then out to the master filter control. So you can hear if I play this, even though my cutoff is all the way up, the master filter is kind of closed, so you're not going to get a whole lot of um, you're not going to get a whole lot of the effect of having your cutoff knob all the way up in the actual filter itself for a low pass filter. And you have this little warm drive button, which introduces a little bit of kind of a warm fuzz to it. Um, so moving on to this next section right over here, kind of going from bottom down. Now we'll be over here on the right. You have this mixer. So you have the main volume, and you have the mix A and the mix B. Um, you can control how loud. So for instance, let's turn mix A all the way down. Right now, all we're hearing is what I have programmed into part B. If I turn this up part for part A, 
you start to hear whatever we have going on for our Part A page introduced into the sound. So now let's talk about the brains of navigation in uh, Silent. So I have a sound that I made in a sound set, but when you have um, the initial bank, so what you do when you're trying to find a patch, you'll go to Menu, and you'll go to Load Preset if you just want to load a pre preset, or you'll go to Load a Bank. Um, so here's the factory bank, so it takes that screen automatically. And now we have the factory, that's the first factory sound in Silent. And so there's these four pages, which, because there's four factory banks, which I think each have, let's see how many slots they have. I think it's 128. So there's 128 in each factory bank. And so let's say you buy a third party preset package and you want to load that up. You just go to load bank and then go to wherever that is on your computer. And you can load up the FXB file and it loads it up. So and then you have this, um, so you, to rename, you just uh, click in this little, click on that little dot right there, and then you type whatever you want, and you can go to menu, save preset, and you can save it wherever you need. You also have copy preset, so if you want to copy a preset and then slightly tweak the whole thing in another instance of silent. You have the initial preset, which is some saw waves, and then you have these um, a randomized preset where if you click on that, it'll actually kind of make sounds for you and they're pretty weird weird sounds usually but sometimes they can be kind of cool and then you have this uh, register and check for updates so let's just do that real quick because I want to check something so you'll see that it has um, it'll say I have the It'll say, hi, Shane Robbins, you're using Silent 1 version 2.211, which is newer than the, the uh, latest official version released. Most sound designers use 2.2.1, and to get that, you actually have to click on that check for updates and go to the page, and if you don't have it, it'll be there. Um, you can just download it. It's a public beta, and they fixed a lot of GUI issues that they have. All right, and then so that pretty much covers it for... Um, part one of your first 30 minutes in Silent One. Next week I will be doing a video on covering all the effects and how to use those and the controls in those and then these modulation envelopes down here and then also these all these destinations that you can use for modulating sounds and kind of making things cool and more playable and expressive. So if you have any questions or comments just let me know below and I'll get back to them as soon as I can and head on over to silenttutorials.com if you haven't checked it out. Thanks for watching, guys.